It is Christmas Day Eve right now. Um, we're like a half hour away from Boxing Day, which I like. I like. Yeah. I like explaining. Boxing Day is actually the most magical holiday of the entire calendar. Here's why: you can be have someone explain to you what Boxing Day is, and within a few weeks you will have completely forgotten. I've never known what boxing day it's is. It's like, it's a dark mat. You, someone might have explained it to you. Someone might have, and you don't remember. It's, it's supernatural. It is witchcraft. And also c- related, some sort of cantrip that's attached. The first thing anyone will ever do when you mention boxing day is unbidden, unable to stop. They will make a joke about hitting people. It's like they can't, they can't, it's like, it's a compulsion. It's, well, I think it is a British holiday, so yes. It's like first level dominate. It's like, it's, you, can, you can't help it. So anyway, um, so yeah, you were with your family in New York's for the Christmas? Yes. And it was very nice. I had a lovely day today. Spent most of my day with my seven-year-old niece, seeing all the toys that Santa brought her. Which was very exciting. You have a seven-year-old niece now? They had another kid? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Eight. She turned eight like two weeks ago. They had another kid? Um, Right after I moved out of the house. (laughs) Yeah. Literally like a year after I moved out of the house. Good Lord. My niece came along. She was was a surprise because her brother is 10 years older than her. So she was a hooray surprise baby. Um, but yeah, so she is eight years old and I, I love her. She's adorable. She's a little sassy pants. Nobody tells her what to do. And I think you guys all saw, I put up a picture of Bridget, who is now 10 years old. Yeah. Wow. Some of y'all remember when Bridget was a kitten. She's a little old lady cat now. Good Lord. She's a little, she's a little bit of a grumpy old lady. Hmm. Like she's mostly still very sweet, but if you pet her wrong, like she will hiss at you. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's been yet another week. We are not to the rectal spective yet. I know the schedule is weird this year. Yeah. The rectal spective will actually be on New Year's Day because that is next Monday. Um, right. That is coming. Don't worry. How could we? How could we deny you things in holes? How how could we? Exactly. But uh, this week, somehow, they are. There's already Christmas shit. Somehow. Okay. They were busy. Let's get to it. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, the uh, radio got our audience. Go out on the world web, interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck's Wrong with You? We're going to start in Germany. Um, Wait. What? We have, we have business. What? Important goat business. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. We cannot forget. Well, I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of forgetting it because this one is. I don't know what to do, Tara. I'm I don't know what the fuck to do yeah, for this like here goat watch. Burn, but I wouldn't call it intact. I'll have to find the pictures. It, it probably just we could see it just on the uh on the live stream. Um so we're going to check in with the Yavla goat and Something weird happened. We we mentioned it before, but it's gotten a bit more pronounced, shall we say. Um, due to a wet uh growing season, there were more seeds in the hay that was used to assemble the goat than was normal. What is what has happened is the birds went yum. And when you see the picture of where what it looks like now. I gotta say, it's a little fucking unsettling. Let's bring this up over here. Yeah. 
Um, like it didn't burn, but it kind of looks like it did. It didn't burn. It looks like a zombie. Yeah. If you look real carefully, let's bring up a bigger shot here. Um, this is live, by the way. This is live live footage of the goat. And as you can see, birds have devoured it. You can see the bones sticking through. There is a, there is a, a you could see the nose cavity and a mouth. There is an eye socket. Oh, God. And it, it's just been devoured. Does that mean the zombie apocalypse is coming? See, th this is, and this has left us all in a bit of a bind. Yeah. Because normally, the question is, has it burned or not? Has someone set it on fire or not? What do we do with this? Does this count? I don't think it counts as burning. Well, does it keep, but, but. It's still just uh, this in my opinion, in my estimation, if I saw this on my front lawn, I would call this destroyed. Yeah, I would say this has been destroyed. I would say this is over. But, but it seems to be an act of God. Yeah, Which how do you quantify that? That God does appear to be Odin. But as far as where <sighs> we fall superstitiously, I do not know. It's it's. You, you, they're breaking the fucking rules. We had we had a system. Now, if you go back and look at the 70s and what happened to the goat in the 70s on the Wikipedia, shit got a little weird then too. Let me just list these off. Uh, because if you Wikipedia has fastidiously kept track every year of how the goat has been destroyed. Um, and for some reason, the 60s was fire. The 70s. Fire smashed to pieces, collapsed, collapsed, counted as destruction. So it's on in the red list. Stolen fire, collapsed, hit by a car, fire, kicked to pieces, fire slash broken. So can we talk? Can we talk about stolen? Stolen with a helicopter. Because that, that thing is large. With a helicopter. Dude, put it in his yard. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You know, sometimes you just don't have time to hang all the lights. <laughs> well, the, the thing's just down the road. It's right there. It's and right I've got my done. pilot's license. <laughs> so like, kicked in? Yeah. Kicked in. Someone kicked the, the, the goat to pieces. <laughs> kicked two pieces. 1978. <laughs> and then we get back to the 80s fire 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 legs destroyed hit by a car fire 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 everything since then has been fire it's just the 70s was yeah. fucking weird and now it, normally it's a red or green let's have a look i'll put this on the screen here normally it's a red or green um determiner of what happens they put this year in yellow because they yeah. don't know what the fuck to do with this either we we this this is this is this is this unprecedented. I think it may indicate that we are entering an era of utter chaos. <laughs> Please no. Now it's some of you year. Now, now some of you may say, "Aren't we already there?" Mm. And to thee, I say, apparently nay. It can always. We have only worse. been. We have only been in the preamble. Can always. Get so worse. get ahead. Yeah, get a helmet. So that's I, I guess we'll see if it if anything more happens, but we can't qualify it as burnt this year, but we can't qualify it as survived either. No. As what the fuck? It's in a weird goat limbo. All right. Well, let's go from Sweden over to Germany. How did this already happen? And this is going to be a little different this week because I can't give Tara the links because the way the setup is. Right. But <sighs> put it up on screen. Drunken Santa crashes into house delivering gifts. A man in Eastern Germany dressed up as Santa Claus 
had his driver's license confiscated overnight after crashing into the facade of a house while trying to deliver gifts in the town of Mulhausen. And this was only 17 hours ago. <laughs> the slosh Santa was on a central street in the town of 36,000 people, not far from the town's church, when he lost control of his vehicle, hit the front of a house, and a parked car. The house was seriously damaged. The gifts belonging to Santa Claus were undamaged. Only ever, the police wrote, only ever referring to the suspect as the St. Nicholas inspired bringer of presents in quotation marks. Passerby saw the crash and alerted the police. Sus subsequent traffic shuts, it became clear Santa Claus was absolutely incapable of drying at which, uh, driving, at which point Santa's ongoing journey was curtailed and a blood sample was taken. They said they confiscated his driver's license and initiated investigations on suspicious truck driving. They did note details like how bad the madly, how badly the man failed the blood alcohol test. Nevertheless, Santa Claus did announce the gifts would be delivered the following day, police said, possibly on foot or with assistance from a little helper or two. By German traditions, that would make his deliveries a day late. People typically exchanging gifts on the evening of December 24th. In that spirit, Merry Christmas, and remember, even Santa Claus must drive sober, police concluded. Brother, what the fuck were you doing? More importantly, what are people in that neighborhood going to tell their children? <laughs> uh, what, what are you telling? Me? Can you think? Can you even imagine the trauma as a small child, and you're you're having Christmas Eve dinner, <laughs> and Santa drives into the front of the house. <laughs> And it turns out Santa's shit face. Ho, 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 shit, I and, got pee. And then the police arrest Santa. No, I, you know, I just, I've been holding it for so long. I gotta go. Do you imagine what that would do this. to you as a child? Well, I would immediately go, wait a minute. I better be getting some points off the naughty list. Yeah. Like we're, we're starters. We need a little we we need a little give, Santa. I feel like you ought to be grading on a curve this year, big man. Like I didn't clean my room. You broke my room. Yeah. So I think I think I get a little something something. Yeah. Hook me up, Santa. <laughs> Related. <laughs> Greg says my, uh... on dashboard, on pants load. Yeah. <laughs> My uh, my niece was watching, they've had Christmas movies running at my sister's house, and I forget the name of it, but the Netflix movie where Kurt Russell plays Santa. Yeah, the, like, it's kind of, I've never, I've never seen that movie. And I was only kind of half paying attention, because I was in the next room, but I looked up at a certain point, and Santa was in jail. <laughs> and he had a whole band, and they were playing a blues song. And I'm like, what is going on in this movie? And the chat's probably explaining it to me. But my niece comes in and I say, Molly, why is Santa in jail? I don't understand this movie. And she goes, oh, because he stole a car. Okay. That's literally all I know about that movie. See, Violent Night is the superior bad Santa <laughs> film. Hands down. Is he a bad Santa in that movie? He is. We discover Santa, uh, no spoilers, but we discover Santa, um, his origins were a Viking pillager, which prepares oh. him to go all John McClane on a bunch of terrorists. No, I'm talking about the Kurt Russell one. Yeah, I'm talking about the David Harbour one. Okay. Yeah, that's a better one. But is Kurt Russell a bad Santa? No, he's just Kurt Russell. Just a uh, really cool santa who gets arrested it's it's like like snake pliskin's history got weird man yeah he got he got a little, like after la shit just got weird i didn't <sighs> realize that was the premise of violent night though that's interesting oh you gotta see have you not seen it no oh it's great it's got beverly d'angelo it's got jack john leguizamo it's done on a shoestring budget and it's incredible it is Pro it, it's it's astonishingly it's so good 
So funny. I'll anyway. have to check it out. Yes. Um, all right. We have more holiday shenanigans. I, I, Spain from Madrid. Police arrest two for kidnapping baby Jesus figurine. Is that kidnapping or just theft? Police in Southeast Spain have arrested two men charged with stealing a baby Jesus from their local nativity scene and demanding a ransom on TikTok. The two, aged 19 and 21, posted a video on the social media platform calling themselves, quote, the kidnappers and demanding a 2,000 euro ransom from police uh, as they accused of not taking good care of baby Jesus. They also showed a man with a pixelated face appearing to lift the figurine off the ground and putting it in the trunk of a car. The hall said in a statement to acknowledge their involvement in theft at the police station. After the video went viral, the statuette reappeared on Sunday evening next to a waste container on a street near the manger display was returned to its crib Monday morning. Now, first of all, if you're going to ransom the son of God, I think yeah. 2,000 euros is lowballing it. That's like, I mean, that's like four PlayStation fives, man. Yeah. And if you're going to kidnap and ransom the little baby Messiah, hmm. you really want to make that trip to hell worth it. You put it on TikTok. You, yeah. I don't think, I, I really don't think this generation, I don't, th I, I, I think 21 would count as Generation Z, right? Yeah, because. Oh, I don't even know anymore. I, I, yeah, I don't think they quite understand the concept of admissible evidence. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think they, they, they've wrapped their head around, I don't know why. Maybe we're just not, do, do they teach social studies anymore? Is that a thing or? I'm also very curious what they meant by not caring for the baby Jesus. Like, what do they know? <laughs> well, they know they could kidnap him. Yeah. Your mothers are going to beat the shit out of you. I don't even care. Even if you're not Christian, your mothers are going to be like, who steals the baby Jesus? Your mom is going to be so mad. Until like two years ago, I um I set up, I have my mom's old nativity set from when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I would set it up. I just didn't have the space the last couple of years. And uh, a couple of years ago, Peggy liked to curl up and sleep in the nativity set. Which is sort of fitting because tabby cats all have a little M on their head. Yeah. And it's the... Uh, the little story is that a tabby cat came and kept the baby Jesus warm, so Mary blessed it and put a little M on its head. That's, I don't remember that fairy. Bible verse, but okay. That, that's the little fairy tale they tell little Christian kids about why there's an M on a tabby cat's head. So Peggy liked to sleep in the little nativity set, and, uh, and she vomited in it. She woke up one morning and... Baby Jesus was surrounded in vomit. So I guess Peggy's not Catholic. <laughs> it's, just, like, it's Spain, which is one of the most, ca most Catholic places on the planet. And you're stealing the baby Jesus. Hi, hi, even I don't believe it. I'm still not going. I'm like, no, 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 that's too much. It's pretty too far. Leave the baby yeah. Jesus alone. It's just like it's, just, it's the same reason you wouldn't steal a Buddha. It just doesn't seem like a great idea. Now, that being said, I I, I could see replacing the baby Jesus with like baby Yoda. I, I could see I could see you know grounds for that. I are you seen? There's a lot of like churches that had do like a life size nativity out on the lawn, yeah. and they don't put the baby Jesus in his little crib until Christmas Day. There's a million pictures on the internet of cats just happily <laughs> sleeping 
in the baby Jesus's little crib. Uh, because it's a if I fit, I fit. Bless your flipping heart. No, I mean it's just. I'm amazed they don't like put the baby Jesus out with like a cage over it or something. Some places do. Or 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 like like they uh like 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 now they just put a picture of the baby Jesus in the manger. And if you want to actually see the G- the baby Jesus, you have to get someone to go bring it out from the back. <laughs> That's how we do it. I went I went to Christmas Eve mass with my sister and her family last night, and I hadn't seen this before. They have the nativity set up on the altar, right? And the priest, as they walked in, was carrying the baby Jesus and placed him. And I, you know, I get it. I suppose it's a nice idea, but it looked a little creepy because he was holding this like life-size figurine of the baby Jesus and holding it like like he was lion kinging it. You don't want to trip while you're doing that. You don't want to trip carrying the baby Jesus down. And it was a little weird. Okay, well, um, speaking of a little weird, we're going away from the Christmas stuff now, but just to... Oh, God. Who, who raised these people? Florida man goes fishing in Bass Pro Shop Pond, flees with live 50-pound tarpon. Fort Myers, Florida. Lee County Sheriff's Office said a young man went to a Bass Pro Shop and took a 50-pound live fish from the store's tank. According to the Sheriff's Office, young man entered the Bass Pro Shop in the Gulf Coast Town Center on Fort Myers. Oh, pardon me. Then with a fish net in hand, he took the tarpon from the store's indoor fish pond. Video said a witness shows the fleeing the store with the fish thrashing around in the net. Detectives are working to identify the culprit and are working with the uh, Animal Cruelty Task Force. Oh, my God. The sheriff's office said, quote, We guess you could say this one will, oh, fish, Ali, catch your eye. I hope the, the sheriff is an elected office there because that that your ass needs to go. Who raised how, you? How bad of a fisherman do you have to be that you have to go to the brass pro shop and, and fish the captive fish? Well, we got a video, too. We, it's, it, you can't see it, but there's, there's video. There's, there's the kid. He's got the fish net. He's, he's just sort of... Everyone is getting out of his way. They want no part of this bullshit. And he's just wandering out of the store oh, bro, dude, get away with a giant me. fish. So Who is being tortured to death, unfortunately. Effectively, yeah. That's <sighs> my that's nephew, fuck. my nephew Pat, who you guys have all heard stories about, who is now 18, by the way, loves Beth Pro Shop. So I gotta tell him this story tomorrow. He'll be very excited. But like what led you to this place? I'm just, my first thought is the fucking people who have to fucking work there and deal with this shit. Right? Like, already. You're not trained for that. It's the Bass Pro Shop. So there's a strike against it to begin with. And then this happens. Can you imagine, like, a little work walkie? Um, I need a, I need a manager. But we're not, I'm not authorizing any more returns today. What do you, no, 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 I, I need a manager <laughs> because somebody is running out of the store with a giant fish. Yeah, that, that's what, the, they're, what they're, they're stealing fishing gear. No, oh. no, they are stealing a fish. See, because this is the way we've set up retail in America and I'm pretty sure around the world, but. Your your average person who works retail, even up to the manager, to some degree, has a very limited range of of allowed actions they're able to take, and quite often they don't get the choice in action. They they've got like yeah. you can do this set. If you don't do this, you lose your job. So when you're presented with something that is not in the handbook, it's I seriously doubt. Here's what to do when someone walks <laughs> away with the store's fish. You're kind of, you're yeah, just, like, your employees well, are locked well, up. 
when I worked at Spencer Gift, our theft policy was basically let them and hope another store catches them and retrieves the merchandise. Yeah. So yeah, like you're very limited in what you can do because they are terrified of getting sued by a shoplifter. Well, so is... when you have all of that conditioning and programming, yeah, like you're just going to fucking glitch. Yeah. Also, you're not paid enough to think about what to do in that. Like you are not paid enough to even really try no. to think outside the box in a situation like that. Nope. You're just like, well, that happened. Okay. When do I like, leave? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you waited till Mary's water broke to go and get your Christmas turkey and they're all sold out at the Walmart. This is not the end. We just did Chinese. Much simpler. Okay, so we're going to uh, LaGuardia. Because of course we have a we have a story, travel story this week. Passenger hid bullets in a baby diaper at New York's LaGuardia Airport. TSA officials caught him. Please tell me the baby diaper wasn't on a baby. Was not on a baby, thankfully. And this is an AP. No one take get the byline for this, and I can see why. The first line is, it was a loaded diaper, but not like you would think. Security officers found 17 bullets concealed inside a disposable baby diaper. Officers pulled the otherwise clean diaper from cat passengers' carry-on after it triggered an alarm in an x-ray machine at airport security checkpoint. An x-ray can see through a diaper, <laughs> people. <laughs> it's, just, it's just cotton and plastic. Uh, according to the agency, the passenger initially claimed he didn't know how the bullet-filled diaper ended up in his bag. Later, he suggested his girlfriend put it there. His ex-girlfriend? I hope. Uh, probably by now. Um, you get you get my ass strung up with the TSA. It is. Oh. I I don't know who put the ba the bullets. It must have been my girlfriend. She. Why would your girlfriend? Have a diaper full of bullets, sir. I you should ask her. That that's a really good question. I don't wanna I don't as know. You, as you've probably surmised, I'm no fucking catch. So you know. <laughs> TSA identified the man as pastor from uh Arkansas, who was ticketed for a flight to Chicago, but did not disclose his name. Port police cited him for unlawful possession of the nine millimeter ammunition. Cited, which means not arrested. Which, I guess, it wasn't a gun. So, yeah, it's still ammunition, though. It's yeah. still a exploding thing. Yeah. Yeah, why would she... Why would your girlfriend put a diaper full of bullets in your carry... This just raises more questions, son. <laughs> I'm know, here to tell like you. A, for like a prank. Explain that one to me. <laughs> Break that one down. C Abbott and Costello, that who's on third for me. Come on. I mean, may maybe the guy was traveling to Chicago for a vasectomy and it's like a shoot and blank thing. Did you hurt yourself with that stretch there, Tara? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. Uh, moving right along. Now we're getting weird and worse. Back to Florida. A lot of half of the stories this week are fucking Florida. I didn't do this on purpose. This is from Tampa. Uh, this is actually from the 12th, so it's a way back. Well, not that far back. But this Florida man's joyride in stolen ambulance ends at sheriff's office. Florida man led deputies on a chase that ended at their front door. On December 9th, before midnight, Columbia County deputy was assisting paramedics with a man, quote, experiencing an altered mental state and possibly under the influence of drugs. According to the news release, the patient, identified as Stanley Williams, 35, climbed into the front of the ambulance and sped off. 
who left the keys in the yeah. ambulance. As a chase ensued, the ambulance struck a curb, damaging a tire. The chase ended when the ambulance drove onto the front lawn of the Sheriff's Office Operations Center. Grass was damaged. There was no damage to the building. Uh, it's not every day a pursuit ends at our front door, Columbia County Sheriff Mark Hunter wrote. Uh, this just goes to show that we never know what we will encounter from one moment to the next. Glad nobody was hurt. Suspect was not able to pose a greater risk to the community. When he was taken into custody without incident, take to the hospital to be checked out. Face charges of grand theft and fleeing and eluding. Who left the keys in the ambulance? Yeah. Like, that, that seems irresponsible. You're on a call with a dude who is already freaking out on the drugs. And you're in Florida. And you're in Florida. It's, yeah, it's right, Grady, is it? It's in Florida. Um, you come up? You coming up? There you go. All right. He's coming. Grady. Uh, Merry Christmas, Grady. Hello. I was good. You good? What you doing? Hi. You gonna decide? Hi. Come on, figure out what you're doing, bro. Gotta tenderize you a bit first. F figure out what you're doing, bro. Come on. Come on. Come on. The guy who's gonna get fired, that's who left the keys in there. Yeah, Mega Mania. Yeah, exactly. I it's I, <laughs> Just, I can just imagine everybody standing there in the parking lot, like, oh, well. God damn it, Jerry, did you do it again? So, uh. No. Do we call for an ambulance? <laughs> I, or a cab? I don't know. How does this work? I mean, I imagine the cops do appreciate it when you just arrest yourself. You just show up, basically. yeah. Of all the places he could have gone, why there? Hey, I need help. These guys are chasing me. Hi. <laughs> uh, Hi. Oh, Grady. I, I, yeah, I, get I, that finger. Yeah. <laughs> show that finger. What are you doing, little man? What are you doing? He's such a good boy. How old is Grady now? He's eight. He is going to be, no, wait, let me see. Yeah, he's eight. He's going to be uh, nine next year. He's eight years old. He's the same age as my little niece. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I guess your niece has got better bathroom habits than he does, though. He still poops in I, a box, so. Yeah, no, she is. She is toilet trained. There you go. Yeah, so that's. <laughs> but speaking of, okay. <laughs> Just one more little derail. Okay. You're familiar with you're familiar with American Girl dolls. Yes. Like they're the doll that you have to have, right? Right. So she has a couple of American Girl dolls. She has a whole like five foot tall American Girl doll house. One of her Christmas presents, she got an American Girl day spa. You know, <laughs> the other one of the other presents, I guess, one of her American girls has a pet cat. Uh huh. And it can walk and meow and stuff. So she got like a care package for the American girl cat, which is like a little fake dish with fake food and fake cat grass uh -huh. and a little toy cat tree and a litter box. Not just a litter box. The litter box came with a little pouch, of, a little packet of sand, which within hours was dumped on my sister's carpet. And little fake clumps of clumped up litter and little plastic turds. So your little toy cat can go little toy poop and you have to little toy scoop it. Okay. <clears throat> okay, 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 I guess, okay. Uh, all right, so our final one this week is also Florida. We, you ever seen those folks who do something and insist it's the principle of the thing? Yeah. And what they decide to do, it goes way past what any rational person would do. Yeah. 
I think there's some elements of that this week. And I want I want to stress no one was harmed. Seriously. Um Florida man shoots deputy, sets house on fire after lengthy standoff over stolen cigarettes. All right. First of all, you're supposed to shoot the sheriff and not the deputy. <laughs> Okay, it was Good right there. there. It was right there. <laughs> a Florida man has been arrested after he shot a deputy and then set his house on fire following a four hour standoff with authorities that started with reports of shoplifted cigarettes. For the Charlotte Observer, an employee of a Wawa convenience store in Deltona uh, called the sheriff's office to report the theft of some cigarettes. When deputies arrived at the gas station where the man was suspected of carrying a knife, the suspect drove away. In a brief chase, officers just deflated his tires as he drove to his home. When he got there, he fired a shot at a 25-year-old deputy grazing his face, which is what they mean by they shot him. It's just sort of like, mm, which Jesus. counts, I guess. Yeah. Suspect has been identified as Dempsey Hadley. Deputies were uh, fired at when they attempted to get him out of his vehicle, which he exited after firing back. And set fire to the back of. So cars on fire. Guns been fired. He was forced into his home, but his vehicle burst into flames at a certain point in the standoff. Sheriff Michael Chitwood said the home turned into, quote, a complete inferno. In fact, officers believe uh, Hadley may have been dead at several times during the standoff because of the scope of the fire. He paced back and forth from the inside of the house to the upstairs balcony, balcony for approximately 45 minutes. He refused to come out of his house and said he would, quote, fight the officers if they tried to get him out. Smoke that was filled in that house and the flames, how anybody could survive that without going down for smoke inhalation. Tells you what the mental state of the guy was, said Chipwood, who uh, said he got a bizarre demand from Hadley when he was finally apprehended. Quote, the first thing he says to me is call the president. He's going to pardon me for this. Hadley is now in custody and suffered injuries after a canine bit him when he was on the ground and failed to take his hand out of his pockets. Sam was also present in the house when he first arrived. His 21-year-old son spoke to authorities about his, quote, er extremely erratic behavior over the last six months. They said they tried to hide some of the ammunition inside the house, although what they couldn't recover further aggravated the blaze. What the fuck? A pack of cigarettes yeah a fucking pack of cigarettes also if you're planning to like hunker down from the cops yeah setting that place on fire oh yeah not gonna work out well oh no oh no you really want that structure intact not even a carton. I know, right? Those are hard, actually harder to get than you would expect these days. They, they, they have that shit under lock and key. But yeah, all of that for a pack of cigarettes? Yeah. Are there Pokemon cards in them? God, I, you know what? They would probably be more addictive that way. Honest to God. Um, I... This is one of those chain reactions. I've been watching What If, you know, you know What If on on, on Marvel. What If, you know, it's yeah, one little I change. Okay, I'm thinking about the What If here. That could have this one choice led to your house is on fire. The chain of events that played out across that day, all coming back to, I'm going to steal a pack of cigarettes. By God. How dare you try to stop me? I mean, kudos for sticking with a theme of incendiaries. True, yeah. Oof. Just, yeah, other people are like, people don't fuck around with stealing cigarettes. If you're in a position to steal cigarettes, arm loads of cartons and run like hell. Those things are worth money. If you're going to steal them, fucking steal them. Don't be like, you know, I'll just get like a, a pack of uh, menthols. Thanks. Bye. 
Because you're going to pay for that? Nope. Bye. How much does a pack of cigarettes even cost these days? About 10 bucks. So you, 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 you burned your car and your house over 10, 10, 10 bucks. bucks. <laughs> over 10 that's fucking. Like, that's like a country song written by a psychotic. Yep. <laughs> the Grace Boost set must be his first pack because he does not know how to light a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck happened? That's that's a lot. I mean, I know cigarette addiction is really hard to kick, but that's a lot. Well, I guess I guess the first time, first thing we learned this week is if you're going to steal, steal big, because fuck it, you never know what's going to happen. Go big or go home. Just hope home is hell not yeah. on fire. Yeah. What the hell? Um, we've learned that if you drive the ambulance, keep a hold of them keys, because uh, they don't care. Yeah. Go big or go home. <laughs> not like, just hey. Go, just do just don't go big and then go to the sheriff's station. It feels to me like one of those, hey, you can't do that. That's illegal sort of situations, right? Hey, that's bizarre. We learned that if you blame your girlfriend for bullets in your carry-on, she probably isn't going to be your girlfriend for much longer. Mm -mm. We've learned that working retail gives you a limited amount of choices. Namely, what to do when someone steals a 50-pound fish alive from the store. Uh, we've learned that if you steal a baby Jesus, your mama is going to have words with you. Like, it, you could steal a car. You could steal a pack of cigarettes. You could steal a gun. And your mom's going to be like, she's your mom. But you steal a baby Jesus. That changes you the. Get, you might get to meet baby Jesus. Yeah, that's that's an entirely different, entirely different proposition. And finally, we've learned: if you're dressed as Santa, keep in mind what you're about to do. Yeah. Because I don't know. Do you, do you remember uh, Gremlins? That shit. That Phoebe Cates speech in Gremlins. That could be you. 